um, we have our next uh, guest speaker, Dr. Ayman Abdullahi. He's an assistant professor of anesthesia and intensive care medicine at Shams University. He's going to give us a lecture on a situation, making a difficult situation much more easy. So when we decide to do a fiber optic, it's already a difficult situation. So we will uh, be uh, happy for any tip that makes it easy. Uh, his lecture today is a tip for successful fiber optic intubation. Uh, Dr. Ayman. Uh, Dr. Hodan, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Can you start, please? Thank you for being with us today. And we're uh, ready for making our life easier. I'll start <laughs> sharing my screen. Thank you very much. Uh, is it clear? Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, 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 first, uh, I would like uh, to send my many thanks and warm greetings to all uh, uh, attendees and uh, special thanks to the organizing committee of the mega online courses, anesthesia courses. Uh, and I have uh, a great honor to share with you with my lecture uh, today. Uh, uh, I want to thank Dr. Samir Al-Ansari and Dr. Mohammed Wahba uh, for their fruitful uh, presentation. Uh, my topic uh, today is uh, concerned with our uh, prime skill as uh, an anesthesiologist. Uh, it's about uh, uh, fiber optic intubation. The title is Tips for Successful Fiber Optic uh, Intubation. Uh, in my uh, faculty, in my department, I had uh, the great honor to uh, moderate and uh, be an instructor of the Advanced Airway Workshop since uh, 2013. And we have done with uh, our team uh, more than 15 uh, Advanced Airway Workshops. First, I would like to uh, declare there is no conflict of interest with any of the material or devices uh, presented in uh, my lecture. And uh, uh, the last video in my presentation, uh, there was two patients and we have taken uh, a consent from them. Uh, I was informed uh, that in tomorrow list, there will be a patient uh, like uh, that one in the picture, nice patient with temporomandibular joint ankylosis with, of course, no opening of the mouth. Uh, the patient is cooperative, no other medical problems. Uh, and I have to think what I'm going to do. What is my plan? Any suggestion? Any suggestion? What should we do? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you, but I think we, we don't have interactive discussions, but I think no one, uh, okay. Dr. Islam said uh, a weak fiber optic. One of my, uh, one of my uh, colleagues suggested that I have to go with a weak nasal fiber optic intubation for this patient as a safe uh, option. Uh, what if I am not mastering the fiber optic? Maybe I will go to uh, think about uh, unsafe options. Uh, maybe I will go to uh, think about uh, uh, awake tracheostomy under local anesthesia. Uh, this is very invasive to the patient. Maybe I will try to put the patient to sleep or make blind nasal intubation, which is a blind technique with its complication. Maybe I will do bleeding. Maybe I will uh, make the condition more worse. Uh, this uh, uh, survey was done in Denmark uh, they asked the Danish anesthesiologists uh, uh, some questions, and 70% they knew the ASA algorithm very well, but only 50% would do awake fiber optic in anticipated difficulty. And 67% had no experience in doing awake fiber optic. And up to 46% did not know how to oxygenate via the cricothyroid membrane in case of emergency uh, pathway. 
So some anesthetists continue to use high-risk strategies as a consequence of limited range of skills. So I have, as an anesthesiologist, uh, I have to know every um, uh, device in the area of airway management because it is our prime skill. And uh, 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 get, uh, I have a very good training on each device uh, so that in different situations, I have more than one option uh, to choose the safe uh, option for the patient. We will focus in my lecture on flexible intubating endoscope. Uh, why? Why flexible intubating endoscope? Because it is a special uh, device. It is the recommended device for intubation under topical uh, anesthesia in awake patients. And it's the only uh, available device that allows you to uh, go the nasal route. Uh, we will talk about indication and contraindications, uh, the anatomy or the structure of the device, uh, how to drive according to a checklist, uh, the routes available uh, for driving, oral and nasal. Uh, is there any difference in the technique between awake and uh, uh, when the patient is under GA? And what is the best tube size to be loaded on the shaft of the fibroscope? And uh, if, the, if there is any uh, special airways uh, for the fibroscope, which are called intubators? And what is the uh, techniques for airway anesthesia if I want to do uh, awake intubation? And we will end with a five minute video uh, of uh, a case of awake nasal intubation. Indication of fibroscope, of course, we all know it. Uh, previous difficult airway, uh, any case of anticipated difficult airway to avoid the uh, iatrogenic injury in case of uh, instability of the cervical spine. And uh, I think one of the most important indication for us is the training purpose, because I have to train on easy patients so that I will be ready uh, in a case of uh, difficult uh, uh, airway. Is it ethical to, to uh, uh, use the fiber optic uh, in, uh, uh, when the patient is under general anesthesia to use the fiber optic to intubate? Yes, 100%. Uh, for me, it's 100% ethical. As long as I am doing a good preparation, I am choosing a skillful assistant with me, and uh, I am uh, asking for a supervision from uh, an expertise uh, around. Uh, this uh, survey was done um, uh, for the British and Irish trainees about the perception of training needs and opportunities in advanced airway skills. And here we can find uh, um, about 83% would fiber optically intubate uh, an asleep patient if he require, of course, intubation without taking a consent from him. The contraindication, the first one is lack of fiber optic skills. Uh, if there is difficult airway with the impending airway obstruction, um, um, allergy to local anesthetic, if I'm going to uh, use the fiber optic as awake, because I have to use local anesthetic first, uh, the fracture base of the skull contraindicated to go with the nasal route, and if the patient is refusing or uncooperative. Uh, uh, the structure of the device, this is uh, the first uh, version, uh, which was uh, fiber optic, was called fiber optic. Uh, it's the fiber optic structure consists of the control section and the shaft. The shaft is usually uh, 65 centimeters long and it's graded every five centimeter with the white mark here. The last five centimeter is the bending section. This is the only uh, uh, controlled by the lever here in the back of the handle. Uh, uh, this is the eyepiece in the control section. There is the eyepiece. There is the angulation lever, which is responsible for flexing or deflexing the uh, last five uh, centimeter of the uh, scope. And there is suction or a working channel, either suction 
or injection. I can use it either suction or injection. The, the view was transmitted in the fiber optic from an objective lens here through fiber optic bundles through the shaft till I can take the image in the eye piece. And this is a cross section at the end. There's the objective lens. There is two light guides. And this is the working channel outlet. When we look from the inside of the shaft, we can see the light cable here and another light cable here. This is the working channel. Can be used for suction in this direction or injection of lidocaine. And there is angulation wire to angulation wire connected uh, uh, to the handle, uh, to the uh, angulation uh, lever. Uh, of course, the fiber optic bundles uh, from frequent use or uh, uh, hard use or kinking uh, might get broken. And then you cannot see or see uh, a black dots on the image from the eyepiece. Uh, the technology changes and then they change the lens here down with a camera chip and change the fiber optic bundles in the shaft with a video cable and then uh, there is no eyepiece directly to the monitor to see uh, uh, the image on the screen. That's why uh, uh, the, the most available devices now are called better, uh, better called flexible intubating endoscope because they are not fiber optic uh, bundles inside now. Uh, it's very important uh, before uh, going to uh, use uh, the fiber optic on a patient, I have to be familiar with my device. So uh, I have to learn how to assemble my device. The assembly here, this is the uh, fiber optic. This is the um, uh, uh, tester, leakage tester. This is the tube holder, and this is the uh, suction uh, port. Uh, it's ideally I have to do this test before uh, going uh, uh, to use the uh, fibroscope in a patient or before going uh, to the sterilization uh, solution. Because uh, if any leakage in the inside system of the uh, shaft, uh, if I, will go, uh, I put secretion inside, it will go to the uh, uh, light cable, it will go to the angulation wire and more damage will occur. How can I do the leakage uh, test? I will connect the uh, leakage tester uh, in a special knob on the lateral side of the handle here. And for 30 seconds, I will inflate uh, with this blue area from 140 to 200. And the pressure should not uh, decrease. If it, the pressure will uh, decrease, so there is a problem in the fibroscope and I have to uh, send it to the maintenance. Uh, just remember, do not uh, release uh, this leakage tester before deflation of the, uh, I have to push this button so that I relieve the pressure. Otherwise, the pressure will continue to be inside the scope. This will make uh, uh, damage for the scope. Then I will put the uh, suction port and its special uh, place here in front of the handle and I have to test it with uh, just pressing on it. Then I have to make sure that I can see a very good image before I will go to the inside of the patient. I have to uh, make sure that I can see uh, a good image. I will uh, put uh, the scope, the distal end of the scope on any uh, letters and see the accuracy of the letters. Uh, sometimes a small dirt or an eminence of the sterilizing, sol sterilizing solution may remain on the uh, camera. Maybe I can get some alcohol swab and uh, clean it and make sure that I can see well. Then I can tube holder if it is uh, present. Uh, I have to put the tube holder uh, uh, inside the shaft and uh, put it up 
uh, like in the picture. Then I have to lubricate the shaft before uh, loading my tube. Uh, lubrication with KY gel uh, or xylocaine gel, it, it's okay. Uh, but I have to avoid the lens. When I'm uh, putting the uh, jelly, I have to avoid the lens. Maybe it will make blurring of vision uh, when I go inside the patient. Uh, I have to choose the best tube size. What's the best tube size? It is one to one and a half more than the scope external diameter. If the scope is five, external diameter of the scope is five, so I have to choose a tube of six or 6.5 uh, uh, because bigger tube will make uh, the incubation uh, more difficult and we will see why uh, after uh, some slides. How to hold the scope? Uh, uh, the standard teaching is to hold the scope with your left hand. The three uh, fingers on the handle, your index, left index on the suction port and the thumb on the uh, lever for flexion and deflection. And the right hand will hold the last five uh, centimeters of the distal end of the shaft, like uh, holding a pencil. This is the ideal uh, position for holding the scope. I have to make sure also that uh, the shaft should be straight between um, my two hands. How to drive? Uh, just between my fingers, I will let the uh, scope to go forward or backward. How to uh, go up or down, just press on the lever with the left thumb, then the, uh, the distal end will flex up, or I will push the lever up, then it will flex down. How to go right and left, just by uh, uh, rotation of my wrist to the left side, then the uh, distal end will go to the left or to the right side and the distal end would go to the right. Uh, this is very important why I should keep a straight um, uh, shaft between my two hands. Because here, when you look to the left hand is switched to the left side, then here, the end went to the left side. But if, this is the correct, but if I make a fold here, the shaft is not stretched, the left, when I go to the left side, the uh, end here did not go to the left side as I needed. Look the difference between the two. Start driving. Uh, most important thing here is I have to rest my right hand on the patient uh, face to give the stability of the scope to, to maintain the midline. Because if I will release my hand and uh, hold it away from the patient um, face, uh, the scope will go to the left or to the right of the patient uh, mouth. And this will uh, make me lose the, the midline, which is very important. I have to maintain my midline while driving. So I have to rest the hand on the patient face. Here, if I will hold, like I said, if I hold away from the patient face, maybe I will go to the left or the side, this uh, left or right side of the mouth. This is wrong. So when I'll choose the oral um, uh, route, the first landmark should be the uvula. The uvula should be in the midline. I have to drive slowly. This is very important. Drive slowly so that I will not miss my landmarks and I will not touch the mucosa because touching the mucosa will stimulate secretion, may, may make uh, some uh, bleeding. This will obscure my vision and make the things more difficult. So I have to drive slowly and maintain target in the center. Before I go, target in the center of the screen, then I will go. It's in the center. So I have now to flex. I will push the lever down. So I will flex up to see 
the epiglots and the vocal folds. Drive slowly again, my target in the center. Then I will approach to the larynx. I'll go inside the trachea. The trachea rings are uh, a good uh, landmark here. I have to reach the bifurcation. Okay, if the nasal root, I have to drive slowly also, and the, the nasal root is very um, uh, narrow space. So uh, uh, liability of trauma and bleeding is much more than the oral route. So I have to be very cautious uh, before uh, going inside. I have to uh, look for the black area because the black area is the air. So I have to put the black area in the center, then go. In the center, then go. Uh, uh, when I go from the nasopharynx, uh, usually I have a good view of the epiglots and the uh, uh, vocal cords. I put it in the center, then go slowly till I reach the uh, bifurcation again. So mistakes in handling and driving, the lower hand not resting on patient face, not respecting midline, not following the landmarks, kinking the scope or using force, and fast driving. Fast driving, uh, I may pass landmarks and I will touch mucosa. Uh, they usually say uh, drive slowly for fastest results because your first trial is usually the best trial. How, how should be my first fiber optic trial if I, I don't have any experience? It should be on a mannequin. Of course, I have to be familiar with the, the device and I have to go nasal and oral routes many times uh, until I feel confident uh, that I uh, know the checklist very well and I, have, uh, I know the uh, directions, left, right, up, down. Uh, I'm not touching mucosa, maybe 10, 15 times to go on the mannequin first. And this uh, checklist we are using in our uh, workshop uh, it, it was done for uh, oral fiber optic intubation in a patient under general anesthesia with muscle relaxant. And here we uh, uh, categorized the uh, performance criteria into one, uh, into four, one, two, three, and four. One should be preparation of the patient outside the operating room. We have to order atropine because atropine dry secretion and make the uh, vision uh, with the scope uh, much better. Because secretion, if will come on the uh, on the lens or the camera, I cannot see. I have to go outside again and clean the uh, lens. Then preparation of the scope before patient entering the operating room. I have to do the leakage test. Then making sure that I have a good picture. Uh, testing the valid function of flexion and deflection. Sometimes you can um, uh, prepare everything and then let the patient inside and there is a problem in the deflection or flexion of the scope. So you, uh, you did a decision, but you didn't prepare yourself or check your equipment. And this is very vital. Uh, uh, testing the suction. Um, uh, I have to lubricate uh, the scope and load the tube. Um, um, I have to choose the uh, proper tube size, which is one to one and a half bigger than the external diameter of the shaft, and then adjust the operating room table to be uh, comfortable to me. Uh, or um, I prepare a step to stand on it. Um, then the introduction, uh, uh, introduction of the uh, scope. As we mentioned before, uh, either oral or uh, nasal route. Um, he, here we can use airway intubator or ask the assistant, a, a skillful assistant to make a jaw thrust or a tongue pull method for us. Uh, then proper hand position as we uh, saw in the previous pictures. Then I'll, I have to drive slowly, targeting the center, uh, median groove of the tongue, the uvula, then epiglottis, then go. Uh, through the vocal cords, no force, no kink of the scope uh, while driving. Then after what, after that, we have to do tube introduction. Uh, the assistant will free the tube for uh, from the tube holder. The assistant lubricates the tube, 
and allow smooth introduction of the uh, tube through the mouth. Uh, the op operator turns the tube 90 degree anti-clockwise, and this is um, uh, a tip, and, and we will know after a while why this rotation is important. The operator keeps the view of the carina all the time, or the bifurcation all the time. Uh, then we will uh, go gently with the tube, and the assistant will help me also to connect to the patient circuit, and the assistant continue to observe the patient vital data and reassure the operator. Uh, here we uh, did um, uh, a good job for the assistant, because this is a teamwork and no one can do uh, fiber optic without uh, choose of uh, or help of a skillful assistant. That's why we uh, emphasize on the rule of assistant on this checklist. Uh, uh, fiber optic intubation uh, after general anesthesia versus uh, when the patient is awake. Uh, from my point of view, the success uh, or the key success for uh, intubation after general anesthesia is due to the choose of a successful assistant to open the airway. While when the patient is awake, the key success is the explanation. I have to explain every step to the patient, uh, every adverse effect of the topicalization or anesthesia, or if I will give injection, uh, like airway blocks, I have to explain every step to the patient and the local anesthesia. I have to give very good local anesthesia for the patient. Of course, I have to give atropine in both and some sedation uh, in the awake cases. So this is uh, not skillful assistant and he is not helping uh, at all the operator and even the situation is dropping to 60 six percent and he is not aware so after uh, uh, getting familiar with the device and have a good training um, uh, on a mannequin uh, so when i come to the list i don't like to choose one of these patients to start my first uh, ga with fiber optic do not rush to use the scope on a difficult case if you are not mastering it. Try to master it by a training and uh, there are four phases. The first phase, uh, it's the mannequin. Of course, we finished it. Then I will choose a patient, easy patient. I will choose a skillful assistant. I will prepare my things very well. And I will ask for uh, a consultant experienced, experienced in the fiber optic to uh, be with me. Uh, uh, then I will, uh, after doing uh, two to three cases of general anesthesia with muscle relaxant, I have to make this step. Uh, general anesthesia without muscle relaxant. I can start the patient with inhalational, uh, like sevoflurane, put the patient deep, and uh, try to uh, go with the fiber optic uh, orally but I have to use I have to use a mouth gag over oscillator. We can English. If you had the, someone is uh, talking or asking a question. Uh, no, I don't think so. They're just uh, uh, okay. making sure that you say the whole lecture. So it's later. very important. Okay. It's very important to try this step because the vocal cord is uh, moving while the patient is uh, breathing normally under general anesthesia. And I will come close with the scoop and uh, try to inject lidocaine through the working channel on the vocal cord. Uh, this is a preparatory step just to uh, let me prepare to the awake when I choose the patient for a week, because this is an important step, I will use spray as you go and the injection from the working channel. Uh, but uh, I have to uh, be very cautious. I have to use uh, a uh, special airway to protect the uh, fiber optic if the patient will become uh, to a light stage of anesthesia, he may bite on the uh, scope and make damage to the scope. Then the last, of course, uh, 
uh, step is uh, doing uh, the patient uh, totally awake. Uh, and this, of course, uh, all the steps should be under uh, supervision of an uh, uh, expert. Uh, when I go to uh, try to phase two, I will choose a patient, uh, easy patient. Uh, I'll give general anesthesia and I'll give muscle relaxant. Uh, I have to avoid the simple causes of failure. And here uh, we will have some uh, videos about some trials of residents, of our residents. What if I will not give anti or I didn't give atropine and didn't uh, follow landmarks and uh, didn't drive slowly? What will be uh, the view? Sorry. So here, he is moving, not looking for any landmark, not looking for the uvula. He drives slowly, no view is, uh, this is the epiglottis, but no one is opening, no skillful assistant. He didn't ask for skillful assistant. He just put the scope inside the mouth without opening the airway, without giving atropine. So that's why the view will be like this. So I have to plan to open the airway with a skillful assistant. Either tongue pull with head extension. Here, the operator go with the scope, trying to reach the uvula. He is following a midline. He's quite good. But he noticed that the airway is not opened enough. So, there was a skillful assistant that, that he was ready to catch the tongue and pull it out. And we will see the difference in, in the view. The operator now is going to, to look for the uvula first and he's maintaining his midline. Now there is a space to go. Drive slowly, target in the center, target in the center. Yes, I can go now, slowly. So this is a good attempt. Another easy, easy method is to do direct laryngoscopy. Just the, the skillful assistant will do direct laryngoscopy for you and the, he will uh, move the tongue away and you will see a lot of space to go. But here, there is a one tip that if you are going to use the direct laryngoscopy to, um, to avoid the tongue and uh, open uh, your airway, um, do not let the skillful assistant to put the laryngoscopy blind. No, he has to put the laryngoscopy and put the tip on the valicula and elevate as if he is going to uh, do direct laryngoscopy. Because sometimes when you put the laryngoscope blind, it may be deviated, it may press on the base of the tongue, the base of the tongue will be squeezed and push the epiglots and uh, close the airway, close the, the view. So if you use this uh, laryngoscope, it, it, it has to be under vision. Or we can use the uh, special airways for the scope. It will retract the tongue up and then you can go Also, the skillful assistant is uh, asked to hold the obturator central by his uh, index and middle finger and push it uh, so that it will not uh, be displaced or moved lateral. It's very important to drive slowly so that you will not use your uh, vision 
Sometimes when you drive fast, you will touch the mucosa. Some mucus will come on the lens, and you have to come out to clean the lens. Okay. This is a very important question. Is the passage of the fibroscope to reach the bifurcation is con uh, considered a sure success of intubation? Sometimes uh, one of your colleagues attending uh, uh, will suggest, uh, if you see this uh, view, okay, don't uh, uh, go with the, with the tube now, don't uh, incubate now. I will give some propofol first so that the patient will not have in case of awake uh, intubation. Uh, this is totally uh, wrong because uh, this article, I uh, uh, invite you, it's a very important article. Uh, I, I invite you to read it, uh, but I did uh, some summary uh, for it in the next uh, few slides. Uh, it's in the British, uh, British Journal of Anesthesia in 2004. Uh, difficulty in advancing a tracheal tube over a fiber optic bronchoscope, incidence, uh, causes, and solution. Uh, usually, this, uh, this picture is usually blind during fiber optic bronchoscopy. Uh, you are not uh, uh, seeing what is happening here when the tube comes down over the shaft of the fiber optic to be uh, to pass the focal cord you ca we cannot see this uh, phase the fiber optic shaft here by gravity and by curvature is uh, between what's called enter arytenoid fissure this is the arytenoid cartilages and the shaft here is between them very very uh, narrow space here so on usual advancement, the tip of the tube is liable to impinge, impinge. The tube here is coming from the right side down. So it will impinge on the right arytenoid cartilage. So if I will choose a big tube, the impingement incidence will be high. This is what's called the gap problem. If I will choose a big tube, so the gap problem uh, arise, there'll be a, a big gap between the shaft and the uh, endotracheal tube, and there is more liability uh, to the right retinoid to come between them and make the uh, advancement of the tube uh, difficult. What will happen if I will uh, face this impingement? I will try to push, to push, the tube is not going inside, so maybe I will do more stress response. I will damage uh, the airway. I may, there is a, some uh, reported cases of a retinoid fracture. Uh, and if this uh, happened, a complete airway obstruction will occur from bleeding and edema. Therefore, a tracheal uh, tube should be advanced over a fibroscope with a great caution, particularly in patients with pathological uh, changes. So what is the options? Uh, I have to choose um, first a uh, small tube size, the best tube size, as we said before. And here in this picture, I have to target this area away from the retinoid. So when impingement occur with the right um, retinoid here, cartilage, I have to move the tube up. So 90 degree anti-clockwise, is is the best option with minimal impingement. I have uh, recorded this video because I was not uh, uh, convinced uh, before I, I do this video. I was not convinced about the uh, 90 degree anticlockwise. So I used the American and I used two uh, fibroscopes one uh, coming uh, from the mouth with the tube loaded for intubation and one from the nose and stayed just uh, when it passes out of the nasopharynx to record what is happening when tube is advanced. We, we uh, used a big tube uh, uh, to make a gap uh, problem in intentionally. So we'll, we'll see this video. 
now I put the scope in the trachea and waiting for the tube to come uh, for intubation. Here the tube come to be impinged with the uh, right arytenoid cartilage. And we are trying to push, to push, to push. No, this is not good. So I have to remember that I have to uh, withdraw the tube for half to one centimeter, then rotate before uh, pushing the tube and that, then the tube passed inside again. So when you face a difficulty in advancing the tube or the fiber optic, just remember this video. So uh, methods for easy introduction, the tube size should be one and a half uh, bigger than the scope, uh, not, not bigger than that to avoid impingement and the gap problem. I have to lubricate the tube uh, well uh, and warm the tube. If I will warm the tube, this will ease the introduction of the tube. Uh, I have to remember uh, the 90 degree anti-clockwise. I have to do some rotating movement uh, while going with the tube. Uh, sometimes uh, if I'm doing jaw thrust, uh, when I release jaw, those thrusts, that will uh, uh, push the tube to go uh, uh, anterior in the wider space. So we'll shift now to airway anesthesia for awake fiber optic intubation, which is a very important uh, skill to do if I'm planning to uh, uh, do awake intubation. I have to review the sensor supply, of course, of the airway. We all know that the trigeminal uh, glossopharyngeal and the vagus are responsible for airway uh, uh, sensor supply. Uh, uh, preparation is a very important for a patient for awake fiber optic intubation. Uh, preparation uh, in four steps, explanation for the patient, and sedation, anti book, and uh, how to do local anesthesia of the airway. Uh, I 100% uh, believe in this statement. The failure to prepare is a preparation for failure. I have to prepare everything. I have to prepare my plan, I have to prepare my patient, my devices, I have to think of plan B. Uh, sometimes uh, to postpone the case is plan B. Uh, so um, and no harm to postpone the, pa uh, the, the, the patient until uh, uh, more than one more um, uh, experience than me uh, to take uh, over the case. Uh, I have to be safe with the patient. Explanation, I have to talk with my patient in the pre-operative visit um, uh, to uh, uh, let him know the reasons for why we are choosing awake intubation for him. Is it uh, safer for you? And uh, uh, some problems will happen with oxygenation. We don't like this. Um, uh, another thing is I have to uh, tell him what is the possible alternatives. Sometimes uh, I, I, uh, I uh, tell the patient that the other safe option is to do tracheostomy. And this is a new opening. Why we don't use a normal passage like the nose or the mouth? Uh, why to do another opening in your uh, body? And this will be under local anesthesia when you are awake also. So this will make the patient uh, uh, be convinced uh, a little bit. Uh, and I have to, to explain for him that we will use local anesthetics as buffs, as gurgle, as nebulization or injection, whatever the technique I will use, I have to uh, let him know. Uh, and what is the potential side effects he will feel like bitterness of the local anesthetic. Uh, lidocaine is very uh, bitter um, and um, uh, he will feel uh, difficult swallowing. He may feel aspiration. He might oh, cough, yeah. and uh, uh, sometimes I show him an illustrative uh, video. Uh, sometimes I, I tell the patient that uh, this uh, uh, procedure uh, may be done in some ENT clinics, uh, like nasoscope, or uh, when uh, the ENT uh, surgeon want to see the focal folds. So this is uh, uh, the half of the procedure can be done in a clinic. Uh, sedation, uh, titration is very important uh, to keep the patient responsive all the time, uh, like metazolam and fentanyl, and I have to consider the uh, administration of oxygen uh, through the other nostril or uh, uh, 
uh, if I'm uh, going uh, uh, nasal or uh, uh, nasal uh, uh, cannula if I will go oral. Anticellulogue, as we said, is very important to dry secretion uh, because if you uh, will uh, give uh, local anesthesia topicalization like uh, buffs or uh, lidocaine gurgle, uh, when it will uh, drop on a dry mucosa, uh, the effectiveness will be uh, more. Uh, because if there is secretion already, it will be diluted with the secretion and the effectiveness will become less. Uh, of course, secretion will obscure our vision, so we don't like secretion. We can use uh, glycopyrrolate or atropine. And if I will uh, going to use the nasal roots, I have to uh, use uh, a nasal vasoconstrictor to shrink mucosa and decrease incidence of bleeding. Airway anesthesia, uh, how we are going to uh, do it. Uh, a very, very uh, comfortable uh, way is to use a five to six uh, milliliter of 4% lignocaine, but I think it's not available. Uh, it's not available in Egypt and I'm not using it. Uh, if you have it, uh, it do a great job. Um, uh, I know some uh, consultants in uh, KSA are using 4% and they have a very gr uh, great effect. So the alternative uh, is either do topicalization versus doing nerve block. I have to block the nose, then the pharynx, then the larynx and trachea. For the nose, of course, I will start with uh, otrivine and start with uh, buffs uh, with lidocaine 10%. Each buff equal 10 milligram. Uh, uh, the same, uh, there is no nerve block uh, for the nose. The same will do, uh, otrivine, then lidocaine buffs. For the pharynx, uh, I usually uh, use 15 to 20 uh, milliliter gurgle, lidocaine gurgle 2%. But I have to ask the patient before uh, dropping the gargle in his mouth, he has, uh, it's very important not to swallow for one to two minutes. Very important because if he will swallow or spat, so no uh, duration uh, for the local anesthetic to stay to, to become effective. So I have to give instruction to the patient not to swallow. On the other hand, if I will do a nerve block for the pharynx, of course, I will do a glossopharyngeal block. At the base of the anterior to the pillar, I have to do it bilateral, two injections. And for the larynx and trachea, uh, when I uh, go with the scope inside, I will use the spray as you go technique. I will uh, fill the syringe with half uh, air and half uh, lidocaine 2%, four milliliter and four milliliter. Uh, uh, and when I come close to the vocal cord, I will. Uh, inject and so the uh, solution will come on the vocal cords and uh, some will spill inside the trachea. I have to give some time, maybe one minute uh, to stay stand still until the local anesthetic uh, work before I will go inside the uh, vocal cord. The alternative uh, while nerve block is to do superior laryngeal block again bilateral to injections and transtracheal nerve block. Uh, of course, I prefer the topicalization method because it's less invasive. And uh, uh, the nerve block techniques are uh, uh, more difficult uh, to perform and carry higher risk, like bleeding or nerve damage or intravascular injection. And what if I have a patient like this with a huge goiter or uh, a huge uh, neck uh, uh, tumor? Uh, there is no landmarks for any uh, block techniques. so. Uh, I prefer the uh, topicalization uh, method. Of course, we use the most common is the lidocaine. The onset is about one minute, the peak effect in two to five minutes, and the duration of action from 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, this is a very important question. What is the toxic dose of lidocaine in topicalization during airway anesthesia? We all know that in uh, the standard uh, toxic dose is five uh, uh, milligram uh, per kilogram, and we will uh, use adrenaline seven milligram per kilogram. But uh, I uh, reviewed the literature, and uh, 
in airway anesthesia, the dose is higher. The maximum safe dose is up to nine milligram per kilogram based on lean body weight. And uh, because most of it will be spat or swallowed with extensive first pass metabolism. Uh, I want to uh, remember you with, uh, if I will go with the patient, if the patient is awake, uh, if I will go with the oral route, I have to uh, use one of these uh, airway openers uh, to protect the scope and to open the airway. This is the Berman Biffin from the lateral side. This is uh, Williams. This is complete, uh, sorry. It's complete uh, circle here. Uh, and if I will use William, I have to remove the connector of the tube before uh, loading the, the tube on the scope because the connector will not pass through Williams. So I have to know uh, what obturator uh, or airway, special airway I'm using. In Williams, I have to uh, remove the connector of the tube. And this is Ovasapian, it's different from the posterior side. And uh, this is a case of uh, awake nasal fiber optic intubation, uh, 36 years old male, 82 kilogram, limited mouth opening uh, and limited neck extension due to ankylosing spondylitis. Um, what we will do for him, we will do awake nasal fiber optic intubation. The preparation uh, was done, uh, explanation, anti um, uh, uh, sedation, and airway anesthesia. And here we will uh, see um, uh, a five uh, minute video with, uh, uh, with uh, preparation and uh, airway anesthesia, then uh, nasal fiber optic intubation. But in the video, we'll see two different patients because for uh, uh, better video editing, editing uh, I prefer to uh, change, uh, to put two patients. Um, I have to make sure of the maximum dose. I have to calculate the maximum dose before start of um, uh, airway anesthesia. And this is the video. I, I want to clean this first. Erasers. Sorry. Okay, no problem. We'll start this video.
um, I want to thank you very much. Uh, and I apologize if I uh, took uh, much time than uh, 45 minutes, I'm not sure. And I want to thank all the panel, uh, Dr. Rabab and Dr. Huda, uh, and thank Dr. Samir Al Ansari, Dr. Mohammed Wahaba for their fruitful uh, lectures. And of course, Dr. Saad Mahdi for his great efforts in organization and facilitation of these uh, online anesthesia courses. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ayman. Um, uh, thank you for the video facilitated lecture. You made everything clear step by step by videos. Thank you for this. Uh, we have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Of course. So, uh, first one is from Saeed Ahmed. He's asking, how could we know the size of the scope? How can? How can we know the size of the scope? You mentioned that the tube should be one to one point. Ah, the size of the scope is on uh, on its case. Yes. It's written uh, on the case of the scope, either five or two uh, or three point seven. It's in the in the case. Yes, it's the manufacturers. So uh, mm. I need to pass the question. One uh, another question, please. Can we use high flow uh, nasal oxygen instead of the conventional uh, oxygen? Nasal cannula, I mean, for uh, a weak fiber optic intubation. Can we uh, use high oxygen? High flow? High flow nasal oxygen, yes, instead of the no usual nasal cannula. Uh, uh, I think no need for that. You just put a nasal catheter in one nostril with a three to four uh, liter per minute. And another alternative is to um, uh, connect the oxygen flow in the working channel so that yes. the oxygen will come distal from the fibroscope when you are going with the scope, the oxygen will come from the working channel very close to the larynx. And another advantage of this, it, it will push the secretion away when you are going inside. Mm. Good trick. The oxygen mm. will push the secretion, that, that's good. Yeah. Another two questions in one. Um, uh, you uh, advise that we should stick to the midline when doing fiber optic intubation. But what if the field is displaced due to pathology? What's the yes, guide? of course. Sometimes, sometimes there, uh, there is, uh, uh, of course, uh, difficult cases. There is tumors in the heart palate or in the pharynx, and there is no anatomy at all. Uh, here, we will uh, remember the landmarks of the nose. I have to go to the black area because the black area is the uh, airway. I have to avoid the mucosa. I have to go to the black area. Okay. Uh, the same uh, uh, person asking, uh, what if I failed to intubate the patient? Uh, will I call for help or will I shift to tracheostomy? Of course, um, uh, if you are going to uh, talk about uh, airway algorithm, I have to have my uh, airway algorithm uh, and uh, I have to move in it. I have uh, either I will choose the ASA algorithm or the DA DAS uh, algorithm whatever it is, or I may have my local algorithm according to my resources. Um, another algorithm, a very nice one, is the Australian version, is the vortex approach. I don't know if you know it or uh, no. Uh, it's very nice, very easy um, uh, approach. Uh, of course, uh, I will ask for help. When I will ask for help, if the patient is awake, Mm -hmm. If the patient is awake and I fail to uh, to intubate him, I will go with the scope and uh, relax. Maybe I will mm -hmm. ask for another. This is not an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know uh, what's the question. Maybe he, he mean emergency situation or? Uh, well, uh, to my opinion, I think it's we should be prepared before doing the fiber optic. I should know if I fail, what should I do? I shouldn't wait until. Of course, of course. Until I'm in the That's in the preparation. I have to be prepared yes. with the plan A, plan B, plan C, as I uh, told you. Yes. Another question, if you don't mind, how many trials should I have before deciding to do a tracheostomy, if I'm going to proceed with tracheostomy? Uh, there is no number. Mm -hmm. There is no number. If the patient, uh, the situation will decide. If the situation, uh, the patient is comfortable and I will ask the patient, okay, we will try again. Uh, if the patient is awake, I mean, if the patient is awake or under GA. Uh, the question is not saying, uh, honestly, it's not mentioning. 
But if the patient is awake, if the patient is awake, he will breathe on his own. So it's I'm of not course. Um, I will keep if the stuff. patient is awake, um, uh, there is no uh, hurry. Yes. There is no stress. Yes. Awake patient. Uh, because if I will go to the scope and uh, stay away and ask the patient, okay, maybe you will try again. Sometimes it happened before. Uh, that, uh, you know, if we try um, and uh, the time passes, the lidocaine will uh, fade. Yes. So sometimes we will delay the case for maybe two hours or three hours, then try again with more experienced one, no problem. And start topicalization again with lidocaine. We'll start uh, from a... Can we combine? Can we combine? We'll start procedure again from the beginning after two hours after the... Yes. Uh, can we combine video laryngoscopy and flexible uh, endoscopy, flexible fiber optic? Uh, we can combine, of course. If, if we can, uh, instead of direct laryngoscopy, I can put uh, video laryngoscopy, maybe it will, but I need two screens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then I will, uh, I will use two screens. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's possible. I think the question is possible. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from your experience, uh, there is, is there a role for the fiber optic intubation in inserting double human tubes? Of course. Mm -hmm. But the, the, if I will, uh, I can uh, put the fiber optic through uh, conduit, through the laryngeal mass, through extra glottic devices. And of course, I will uh, 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 make sure of the position of the double human tube with the fibroscope, of course. And there is a special uh, tubes, uh, I think, uh, with laryngeal blockers, EZ. EZ laryngeal blockers, it comes with a special connector, four-sided mm. special connector, mm. one for the tube and one for the fiber optic, one for the ventilation. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank I can you. use it, it's very nice. Mm. Uh, another question. Uh, why you choose the nasal airway? Uh, what if bleeding uh, happens and uh, you lose the field? How, how would be the management then? If, I will, uh, if the patient is awake again or under GA? Uh, the question didn't mention, honestly. Uh, if, if under GA, if I have bleeding, I have to stop. I can, uh, uh, if I, uh, there is no vision, so no need to try. I have to go away with uh, back with the fibroscope. I have to wait. Uh, maybe I will use some vasoconstrictors. I will reassure the patient and then uh, 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 evaluate the situation. If the patient is still mm -hmm. happy, we can try again from the other nostril or mm -hmm. in the same nostril when the bleeding stops. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we go through the LMA if? Uh, for an experienced hand, can we go? How can we use the? I think oh, it's some the, situation when the patient is uh, under general anesthesia and I, I face the difficult uh, intubation, uh, two or three times uh, direct angioscopy and I cannot succeed, and I put an angel mask, and uh, the patient have to be prone, so I have to put a tube. I I cannot put the patient prone uh, when the patient is with an angel mask. So maybe I will try to go with the, uh, with the scope because if the, the laryngeal mask or extra glottic device is uh, doing a good ventilation, so it's well fitted. Uh, maybe it's mm -hmm. in front of the larynx. So if I will, most probably when I go to the scope, I will see the vocal cords just ahead. So I will load the fibroscope mm -hmm. with the proper size tube. I have to choose the proper size that will pass through the uh, inner diameter of the uh, extra glottic device. Uh, all of the new uh, extra glottic device now, it's written the tube that can be used. Uh, the air cue, the AMBO uh, uh, laryngeal mask or the uh, laryngeal mask, it's written what size of the tube is compatible with it. So I will choose the uh, proper size of the tube to load the scope and go through it. Yes, so okay. uh, we, have, that, um, yeah. we have a question actually from uh, Prof. Sahar Marzou. Prof. Sahar, uh, are you here? Yes, I'm here, Dr. Ayman. Thank Dr. you so Sahar. much for your excellent, hi, thank excellent Dr. lecture, Sahar. really, yes. How are you? I'm so proud of you. 
Uh, I'm very happy. Point, I'm way. very happy to meet you here. <laughs> yeah, My professor, so Dr. Dr. Sahar, one no, of the experienced uh, consultants and professors in airway management, Cairo no, University. No, 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 you are the boss, by the way. <laughs> Anyhow, Ayman, can I ask you a question, please? Of course, uh, please. What about uh, intuba fiber optic intubation through supraglottic devices? What's your experience? Which supraglottic devices is the better, is the best for fiber optic? Um, I tried the AMBO, the AMBO uh, extra glottic device, and I tried the um, LQ. Mm -hmm. But my LQ experience, uh, yes. but my experience, I think LQ is very, very nice one. Uh, but I didn't try uh, much, maybe two or three cases. I didn't ah, okay. do it in the practice. Maybe we are doing in the uh, workshops. Uh, I mean, you are totally right. AQ is the best. And yes. uh, I just uh, uh, heard uh, now that you were asked a question about the LMA. Uh, yes. Actually, uh, to my opinion, LMA uh, intubation uh, through uh, using fiber optic through LMA is very limited because if you use the uh, size uh, three, uh, what type of the uh, tube you can choose? Uh, size three uh, endoscope? Yeah, no, 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 size, size three. Size three, laryngeal mask. So the tube will be the five, which ah, will be if I, very, uh, yes, for this, adults. Of course, of course. This mm -hmm. depends on, this depends on uh, the scope. If, uh, if I have the scope five, so I have to use uh, uh, a tube uh, 6.5, and this will not go. Yeah, you are totally right. But I'm asking about yes. uh, the choosing the tube, if you have available. A small fiber optic, and you are going to use a tube through LMA, it mm. will be uh, tightened and restricted by using which size of the tube. Because if you use LMA size three, the yes. tube size will be five. So it will yes. not be good for ventilation. But in case of RQ, as you just said, it's excellent for uh, fiber optic because uh, RQ, if you use size three and five, you will be free to use either seven and even 7.5, which is very suitable for adults. You are totally yes. right, Ayman. Uh -huh. yes. And thank you again thank for you your for, lecture. Thank you for the advice. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we are beyond the time now, Dr. Hoda, so yes, you we're can uh, yeah. close the session kindly. Thank you. Uh, much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the um, lectures. Uh, thank you, Dr. Samir, Dr. Muhammad, Dr. Ayman. Thank you for the Dr. Saad for organizing and keeping this engine running. Thank you very much. Thank you for all attendees. Uh, and I hope we answered all your questions. Um, thank you, everyone, and see you next week.